in that hot seat. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson gearing up for the start of her confirmation hearings. And tonight, Republicans are making clear they won't make the process easy. Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri, chief among them, with his baseless claim that Judge Jackson is lenient towards sex offenders. That bogus claim gaining this backlash from Democrats. As far as Senator Hawley is concerned, here's the bottom line. He's wrong. He's inaccurate and unfair in his analysis. Judge Jackson has been scrutinized more than any person I can think of. This is her fourth time before the Senate Judiciary Committee. And three previous times, uh, she came through with flying colors and bipartisan support. The last time as soon as just last year. And now uh, Senator Hawley is making these charges that came out of nowhere. The independent fact checkers like the Washington Post and CNN have discredited his claims already. They should have. There's no truth to what he says. Even if Republican senators don't bring Hawley's attack to the hearing room this week, we're told they are bound to find a way to paint the federal judge as soft on crime. Joining me now, MSNBC contributor and NYU law professor Melissa Murray and executive director of the National Office for the Advancement Project, Judith Brown Dianis. Judith, we know what the GOP is planning to do. How might Judge Jackson being, be preparing right now to counter this line of attack that she is quote unquote soft on crime? Well, this is not her first time <laughs> through this process. Um, you know, she has been confirmed by the Senate two times for the judiciary. And so she knows the ropes. She knows the kinds of questions that will be thrown at her, the kind of disinformation campaigns that we have seen um, coming from the right and from Republicans on all types of things. And so I'm sure she is, she is prepared. She knows how to do this. And so the things that we expect are these latest charges. And then, you know, they'll go after her for being a public defender. <laughs> a public defender is a person who actually um, follows the Constitution in making sure that people have a fair trial. Uh, and so the fact that they will go after her for that is ridiculous, but they will do it. And she's calm under pressure, and so she's going to be ready for them. Melissa, we know that she has been preparing for this. We know that the Congressional Black Caucus has set up a war room, so they are ready to do rapid response throughout this week. So two questions for you. What aspect of Judge Jackson's records is she going to be using to refute these attacks? And then which aspects of her record is she going to highlight to say what you're hearing is not even the totality of who I am? You know, I mean, she has a very broad record, Alicia, and that is abundantly clear. She is going to be one of two members of the federal judiciary and the Supreme Court who have actually served at all three levels of the federal judiciary. So in order to refute these claims that she is soft on crime, she needs to look no further than her own record as a district court judge, where she has sentenced individuals well within the guideline ranges that are prescribed for judges. She can look to her record as a federal judge on the appellate court and of course she can look to her record on the sentencing commission I think this is what Senator Hawley has made the most noise about but that was a bipartisan commission where she was crafting sentencing policy with no others than William Pryor an 11th Circuit judge who was on President Trump's shortlist for the Supreme Court and all of those decisions around sentencing policy including policies regarding uh, sentences for child pornography offenders were reached by unanimous consent of all of those commissioners including Judge Jackson and Judge Pryor. So this is very easy to refute. It is unfortunate that it's going to come up in the first place. So, Judith, I mean, the, the, that's like the record. That's what we should be talking about. Instead, a lot of this is going to be about politics. Talk to us about the politics that is happening in the background. Well, you know, the politics are really that the Republicans want to continue to pack the courts, right? And at the same time, they love disinformation and misinformation. And so that's what she is up against. And that means that they are going to dig into a record that they've already seen before. That's the really ridiculous part of this is that, again, it was just last year that she was um, confirmed to be on the Court of Appeals. And so they're going to go after her. We've already seen the attacks on whether or not she's intelligent enough or 
qualified enough with ridiculous requests to see her LSAT scores, which is like, show me your papers, which is what they wanted President Obama to do. And by the way, nobody cares about LSAT scores when you have graduated from law school. And so it's ridiculous. And, um, and they're trying to do all of these kinds of attacks to actually kind of avoid the questions around race and the idea that a black woman is being um, nominated to the Supreme Court. But really underneath all of these questions um, are the pretext for this is about race. I'm shocked that you don't want to know how someone did at a logic game when they were 22. <laughs> Melissa, let's sort of look past this week, right? Let's look past all of this. She, she's likely going to be confirmed. How is she likely then to reshape the court? Well, in the short term, I think there's not going to be a lot that she can do in terms of shaping the trajectory of this court, which has a very solid six to three conservative supermajority. So a lot of the work that she will be doing, especially in the hot button cases, is likely to be dissenting. And she can surely write very forceful dissents that can chart a path to the future. But I think it's worthwhile just thinking about the fact that this liberal wing of the court will be composed of three women and three and two of those three women will be women of color again reflecting a kind of multiracial democracy for which the biden administration and the democratic party itself has stood for so that will be important but i think we also have to think about what the long-term effect of a justice jackson will be and perhaps in time she will become part of a liberal majority on the court and she will be in a position as a more senior justice to really lead the way there as well. Melissa, Judith, thank you both so much for walking us through this. Next, new signs that more often than not, Russians do not believe the lies their president is telling them about his war on Ukraine. Could their silent disgust lead to public resistance? First, a preview of what is ahead tonight on Amen. Hey there, I'm Amen.